have us here. So. Testing. Testing. Let's go. Turn up. Testing, 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 testing. Testing, 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 Noah, this one? Yeah. Testing.
Can you hear me? You hear me? La 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 la. Talk into the piano mic. Andrew. What? Talk into the pulpit mic. This one. John. Ask up here. Ask him if he's hearing me. Talk into it. What? Just just keep talking. Are we good? Okay. Is this on? Okay, this one. This one's on the. I've got, I've got full battery on this. This one has full battery, so. Is this? What's on? Hey, Lizette, does she need me? Does she need me for singing? Is this on?
I don't have any bars up here. Keisha.
Osweiler, the rookie. There's three. Where's Jacob? <laughs> no, I know. No, 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 no. Let me see. GG Center. Yeah. Or is that too low? Amazing Grace, how sweet. Let's do it in uh, D. Three. Go play Amazing Grace in the sub. Can we do it in D? Let me skip that hip. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What's the tempo? Last one? We're doing Amazing Grace, of course, uh, Swiss Grace, but all of us. So you got out the last two. Mr. Kreitz. Mr. Kreitz. Mr. Kreitz. Am I too loud? Am I too loud?
If you guys would please take your seats. We're going to get this second day of the Revival Series started. Praise God, I see all these new faces. Amen. Welcome to the second day of the FAA Revival Series. I hope you guys all had a good day today. Uh, today now is the time to just relax and learn more about Jesus. And I just really thank him for giving us the opportunity to have this Revival Series. Uh, please bow your heads with me really quick to start it off. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for everything that you've given us, Lord. Lord, you've blessed us with so much, with homes to stay in. Uh, I thank you for this school and for all the faculty, and we're so grateful for them all, for all these wonderful parents. Lord, we thank you for bringing all these people out here today so that they may learn more about you, and we ask that you fill our speakers with your Holy Spirit. Uh, bless us all now, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. First song tonight is going to be Jesus at the Center.
please stand and join us as we sing Amazing Grace. Uh, join us as we sing Amazing Grace. Sorry about that. Lastly, our theme song for this week, Come to Jesus.
Dear Jesus, I want to thank you for this um, weather that we've been having. We needed the rain so very badly, and I want to thank you for answering prayers. Uh, many of us have been praying for rain for a long time, and I want, I want to um, ask for the speakers tonight, as um, I'm sure they are nervous. I pray that you will speak through them and that um, you will be shown to all of us who are here. And thank you for the opportunity for the students to get up here and speak about you and that we have the opportunity to come to such a great school where we can share you to others. And thank you for your love and kindness. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Our scripture reading found today, I mean, our scripture reading today is found in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And it says, And the dragon was angry at the woman and declared war against the rest of her children, all who keep God's commandments and maintain their testimony for Jesus. Amen. I can see it in their eyes, empty people filled with care, headed who knows where. On they go through private pain, living fear to Laughter hides their silent cries, only Jesus hears. People need the Lord, people need the Lord at the end of broken dreams. He's the open. People need the Lord, people need the Lord, when will we realize, people need the Lord. We are called to take his light To a world where wrong seems right What would be too great a cost For sharing life with one who's lost Through his love our hearts can feel all the grief they bear they must hear the words of life only we can share people need the lord people need the lord at the end of broken open door. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. When will we realize that we must give our lives for
I'm so ashamed. We disobeyed God. Will he ever choose to accept us again? It's okay, Eve. God has a plan. We just have to believe. Let's make the choice. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. If you accept him into your heart and heart, you will have eternal life. I don't need saving from Jesus. My heart is not hardened. I follow the tradition of Moses. That's what makes me righteous. That's your choice. Friends, averse thy himself from lawlessness. This is certainly not the right way. I shall linger a little longer. No harm shall occur unto me. Tis only thy decision. Please, Charles, don't go down this road. Don't be led astray by evil and foolishness. Do not be ridiculous, Caroline. This is the better way for me. No evil and foolishness harbors here. Good day. Do as you so choose. Tony, you can change. Your drinking habit isn't for life, man. There's a way out. Sorry, Jack. Booze is too good to let go. Besides, nothing bad has happened to me. Why should I be worried now? Fine. You make your choice. Girl, those drugs are messing you up. You really need to get some help. What are you talking about? They're not messing me up. If anything, they're helping me meditate. I'm not giving them up. Choose your own path. Parties are always getting you into trouble. Why keep doing this to our family? Stop before it gets out of control. I ain't doing nothing. Parties are fun, and we don't get into trouble much anyways. Families can care less about me anyways. I'll be fine. Do what you think is best. Hey, Lizette, can I talk to you about something? Lizette, hey. You need to quit messing with evil. Come on, it's dangerous stuff. You need to ask God to keep you protected from it. Please turn away from it. What are you talking about? It's harmless. If anything, this stuff is really fun. And it's only a little game. Besides, nothing bad has happened to me, so why should I stop? Well, you make the choice. Ephesians 6.12 says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. But, you know, this war will soon end, and ultimately, God will be the victor. So, which side will you choose to be on? Hello everyone, my name is Christiana Kerbs and I'm so happy I can share Christ with you this evening. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for this night. Thank you for this revival series. And thank you that you gave your life for us. Thank you that you can bless us all with everything that we will learn here tonight and help you to speak through me. In your name, amen. When I was just a first grade girl, I came into the school. On the first day, I was verbally bullied just because I was different. I spent time wandering around the playground and meeting younger children, which for those who know me, I have a lot of younger friends, so that's probably your expl explanation. Um, as time went on, the, water, the bully, bullying watered down. I had at least a friend or two and that was enough for me. And by fourth grade, life was getting easier, or so I thought. Little did I know, that same year, my parents would file for a divorce. I didn't expect such a huge change, and I admit I was off guard. I was so emotionally shaken that it led me to flirting with the evil side. I wouldn't enter the church because I thought it would, like, I thought it would make the devil happy, or it would at least bring someone to like me. And I didn't take care of my own body. Two years passed, and eventually I began playing around with pornography. And I didn't take care of my own body some more. And by sixth grade, I decided, you know what, let's just stop with the church thing. It's a good idea to go to church. And that I should take care of my body. Well, sixth grade passed with little or no improvement. Finally, in seventh grade, I decided I was done because I met multiple people in my life that changed my life around. Pornography was still a habit though because I har and because of it, I was harassed multiple times. Last year, I was sitting in Mr. Lortzen's class about, and learning about how God does not love pornography but re is rejected by it. Right then, I decided no more of that. I was gonna give my life to God. Last year at our revival series, last time, I got baptized to God on the last day of the revival series and I announced to the world that I was gonna give my life to God and reject that evil lifestyle I once had. Have you ever felt like you're in the midst of a battle? First of all, what is going on? The truth is, just like me, there is a battle raging inside of you over your soul. We are in the midst of a gigantic battle called the Great Controversy, which is a cosmic battle between good and evil. It's lasted thousands of years. So this leads us to the question, where, why, and how did this family feud start? Let's read Revelation 12, starting in verse seven. Then war broke out in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But they were not strong enough. And they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the world astray. He was hurled to earth and his angels with him. Now let's stop right there. You might be thinking right now, so what does this have to do with how it started? Well, maybe you're right. It doesn't show the beginning, but it does show a lot. The dragon, Satan, was not strong enough and he was hurled down from heaven and he was never going back. He wanted to bring down more than just a third of the angels. He wanted to bring mankind with him. Let's look at some scriptures to help us understand what might have been going on inside of the great dragon to start a rebellion. Let's start with Ezekiel 28, 13 through 15. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed guard as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day I, 
from the day I created you till wickedness was found in you. And now Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Zephon. You will I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. To summarize, Satan wasn't satisfied with the high ranking God had given him and refused to believe that he wasn't equal in power to God. Because of his selfish attitude, we are now involved. And there's more. When Satan and his angels finally were on earth, they decided to go after the first humans ever created. In Genesis 3, 1 through 6, the serpent says the serpent was more subtle than any beast that was in the field that the Lord God made. Basically, Satan was using the serpent to tell the woman that God was holding back the fruit because he knew once you have eaten from it, you would become like a god. The devil was using the same tactics he used in heaven, saying that he was use, that God was taking away your full potential and trying to be an overpowering God. And that it doesn't stop there. We still deal with stuff like that today. For example, teens, but not limited to teens, think that God's ways aren't fun and are oppressive. Some people have a tough time putting God first in relationships which can often lead to conflict or divorce. If you look around the world, you will often find a lot of pride, envy, and greed, which are also found in God, not in God's character, but in Satan's. If you look inside yourself, you can probably see the evidence of a battle in your life. I know I can. Now my friend Leslie is gonna share more on this topic. Hello and good evening to you guys. Yeah, my name is Leslie Lopez and I am a senior here at Fresno Adventist Academy. And I will be continuing on with what Christiana was saying about the great controversy. I'm going to be, my first point is going to be who wins in this great controversy. Well, there's two verses that come to my head when I think of this question. They are both found in Revelation. Let's turn to the first one in Revelation 12:17. Well, for Revelation, yep. Yeah. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna give a brief summary about what Revelation 12 is talking about. And it talks about a pregnant woman clothed in white. The woman represents the church and the church members. Her baby represents Jesus, and the dragon represents Satan. Then the dragon went to make war with this woman and she attempted to destroy Jesus. As a result of, of this, he failed. And so he went to go make war with the remnant um, church members. And Revelation 12, 17 states the outcome. They have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony, and they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid. This passage in Revelation speaks of the great battle going on in Christ alone. They overcame this world full of sorrow, death, and sin. This speaks of the people back in Noah's day, Moses' day, Jesus' day, and our day today. Revelation 17, 14 says, these will wage war against the lamb and the lamb will overcome them because he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And those who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. This battle has already been won ever since Jesus died on the cross and overcame sin. We are guaranteed victory. There is nothing we cannot overcome this world by the blood of the lamb. Jesus didn't just overcome for himself. He specifically died on the cross for his precious beloved children. Overcoming and entering into eternal life is described so perfectly in the famous verse, which we all know, John 3:16, And it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him 
shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It was for us, it was for me, for you, parents in here. How many of you would honestly allow your child to die for murderers, for rapists, for liars, for cheaters, etc.? You can imagine the immense love shown that God has for you and I by allowing his son to die for us sinners. Okay, we've seen it perfectly stated in the Bible that Jesus and his followers win this great controversy. And yes, we know that the great controversy, we know what it is and we know the outcome. How can knowing this be beneficial to you other than being aware that we are in the midst of a war, which is obviously very important? What else is there about knowing this? You know, I felt condemned in my heart to connect the great controversy with our private lives today by asking a question, and this is also my next point. Is it fair that we have to suffer in this world over someone else's sin? So yes, ever since Adam and Eve sinned, we've inherited sin. Okay, don't raise your hand, but just think about this. How many of you have asked yourselves this question? Is it fair? Why God? Why me? Why do I have to go through this pain and hurt? A simple straight up answer is no. It is not fair that we have to be born to inherit sin over someone else's mistake. From generation to generation, sin has been passed down and is only getting worse and worse. Not just the fact that newly discovered diseases are being found, but as time goes by, the cruel destruction and selfish character that we humans have inherited seems to be getting worse and worse as time goes by. Then we as individuals seem like this small speck in this huge world, feeling deserted by God and left alone in this cruel world to suffer. Jesus, and Jesus answers to us in Isaiah 41, 13 so beautifully. He says, for I hold your right hand, I, the Lord your God, and I say to you, do not be afraid. I am here to help you. Deuteronomy 6, 31, 6 says, So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. 365 times, which my English teacher, Ms. Um, Jones, has repeated to us this various times. 365 times the Lord in the, says in the Bible these words, Do not be afraid. John 16, says, I have told you all these things that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, and Jesus understood that. He couldn't bear to live eternity without his precious children. That is the reason why Jesus came to die on this earth. Never feel alone. The Lord is with you. He can give you strength to endure. Whenever you hurt, he hurts too. Look at the story of Lazarus in John 11. Here we have Lazarus. He has just passed away. And then his family is there, and Jesus comes over, and Jesus sees that, their fam that the family is mourning over Jesus' death. And he begins to weep too, not because he felt like there was no hope. He began to weep because it broke his heart to see how they were hurt. All those times someone hurt you, all those nights you cried yourself to sleep, students, all the times you felt the stress of school, <laughs> Jesus was with you the whole time. And he's, he's going, he, not only is he going to get you through this, but he's going to comfort you in those times. And um, let me, I would like to share a personal story to connect with this. When I was a little girl, growing up, I did see the cruelness of this world. That's me, Frankenstein-looking little child, but yeah, that's me. Um, I was a little girl, yeah, I, so growing up from the, um, the beginning, I saw the cruelness of this world. I grew up seeing domestic violence and drug abuse. One day in specific, I remember I was eight years old when my mom told me that we were moving houses. And I was so excited because I was going to be going to a new school. But little did I know, I was going to walk myself into a terrible life-scarring experience. The first few days was good, but then by the second week, I began to get bullied. At first, it was verbal bullying, bullying, and then it turned to physical bullying, and then verbal bullying again. 
I remember coming home day. I remember days coming home crying because I didn't know why people were so mean. I didn't know why they were doing this to me. As I got older, life began to get even harder. And I went through a terrible life-scarring experience that led me into self-harm, like cutting myself, um, depression. I developed an eating disorder. By the time I was in eighth grade, day after day, it was constant conflict between me and my mom. My grades were rock bottom, and all I wanted to do was either go lock myself in my room or go, or go to my best friend's house. I'm, I remember one day vividly where I made, um, I was starting to get, by this time I was starting to get um, suicide thoughts really bad. And I remember one day specifically when I made the decision that I was going to commit suicide. I remember that day so perfectly because I remember um, that I locked, I remember that day so perfectly. And, um, and right when I was about to do it, I felt a voice tell me, no, Leslie, it's not your time. There is a big purpose for you. And it hit me that I, what I lacked in my life was God. But as, as time went by, again, I fell into Satan's hands. And again, my freshman year, I began to consume alcohol. And at this time, um, I did, well, I, at first I did it just for fun, to hang out with friends, what I considered fun. But as time went by, I used it to numb my problems. And as we all know, anything that isn't God to try to numb our problems, it's all temporary and honestly, it doesn't. It's not gonna help you. If anything, it's just gonna get you hooked on something. Eventually, my family found out about me and my alcohol problems and it caused huge problems. Again, I realized that I needed, what I needed in my life was God. So my sophomore year of high school, I, just, I, started, I asked to get Bible studies. I remember I asked Pastor Dean, and at this time, his wife was pregnant, and that was so cute. No, but yeah, his wife is pregnant, and um, I asked him if I can get Bible studies. And then he was a little too busy, but at that time, we also had a new Bible worker. And his name, if you, any of you guys know him, Joey Manzanares, um, he began to get me Bible studies. And then... On March 1st of 2015, I got baptized and I committed my life to the Lord. Throughout this whole time, my life seemed like a constant tug of war between God and Satan and me being the one in the middle. Satan being the one who's constantly searching for my soul because he wants, it, because he wants me to um, reject Jesus and lose my soul. Jesus being the one who's constantly searching for my soul because he wants to take me to heaven and spend eternity with me. To this day, I still sin every day. I still fail him every day. But luckily, Jesus loved me so much that he has already paid that penalty for me. And I would like to share a poem with you guys. Lastly, to close up, I would like to share a poem with you guys. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, that was me in eighth grade. And a lot of you have already heard this poem, but it just connected so perfectly with the sermon I was talking about, and it just touched my heart. And... Um, it says, one night I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Many scenes of my life flashed across the sky. In each scene, I noticed footprints in the sand. Sometimes there were two sets of footprints. Other times there was one set of footprints. This bothered me because I noticed that the low periods in my life when I was suffering anguish, sorrow, or defeat, I could only see one set of footprints. So I said to the Lord, you promised me, Lord, that if I followed you, you would, be, you would walk with me always. But I have, I have noticed that during, the most of my, that during the most trying times of my life, there was only one set of footprints on the sand. Why, when I needed you the most, you have, you have, been there for me the lord replied those are the times the, all those times when you saw only one set of footprints i carried you all those times whenever you felt forgotten by the lord all those times when you felt like the same as him when you saw one set of footprints 
The Lord was with you. He carried you the whole, all those times when you felt low in your life. He was the strength, and he's, he was the one that carried you. And never feel like the Lord has forgotten you. And even though we are in the midst of this great controversy, we know that Jesus got us. And we already know the outcome. We know he wins, and we know that we're going to spend eternity with him. Okay, let's close with a prayer. <laughs> Father God in heaven, thank you so much for just this revival series, Lord. I just pray that it may have touched people, Lord, and I pray, Father God, that as we leave, that this may not just be words that we heard now, Lord, but that we may truly let it go in our hearts, Father God, and apply it to our lives. I pray that our relationship with you, that whether if it's weak, whether if it's strong, that we continue to seek you, Lord. And for any of us who have not made that commitment, Father God, I just pray with all my heart, Father God, that they have been touched by this and that they may commit their lives to you, Lord. It's the biggest decision that they could ever make in their whole life, Father God. Thank you so much for being an amazing God and for always carrying us in those times when we needed you, Lord. Thank you so much for being with us all those times when we stressed out, all those times when we felt the weight of sin, all those times when we cried ourselves to sleep, Lord, all those times when we felt hurt. Thank you so much for being such an amazing God and being there for us, Lord, and hurting with us, Father God, and making us strong in those moments too, Lord. I just pray that when times come of trials and we feel this great controversy weighing on us, Lord, that we may be still, Lord, and know that you are our God and that you are going to get us through it, Lord. And we know the outcome of this great controversy. Let us not fear Satan, but approach him, Lord, with confidence, knowing that you're going to help, that you're going to defeat him, Father God. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us and that the rest of the revival series may, get, may go good and that you may be with everyone as they head on their way, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, and you guys are dismissed. You're free to go.